I'm Cam. I'm from the University of Vermont. Uh, this is some work I did with a collaborator, uh, Jakob Roslevic at um, Czech Technical, and he he did a lot of this work, but he couldn't make it uh, to this. So um, I'm going to be presenting some of our some of our work, and really, it's just a um, a set of best practices for if you want to use this um, this method for designing software robots, for simulating software robots. It's called the material point method. And I'm really just going to kind of um, walk through how the, the method works and um, um, talk about why you might want to use it. Um, I, I don't know if I need to go too deeply into this at this point in the conference. Um, but uh, why would we want to use soft robots? There's many different reasons, but I think you can boil boil them down to kind of the human the the human reason maybe on the right, where which is uh, safety. If I had the option to be hit by a robot arm made out of steel or rubber, I would pick the one made out of rubber. Um, and then uh, maybe on the bottom left, you can kind of uh, boil a lot of the reason why you might want to do soft robots um, to morphological computation. Um, soft materials have just a lot more intrinsic computational power. Um, and then, of course, if we look to the biosphere, uh, pretty much all of the organisms we observe have have soft components and for good for good reason. Um, uh, so, yeah, we uh, soft robots have been simulated for a long time. It kind of dates back to the early 1900s with finite element methods um, where you, you know, take a material, uh, discretize it into a bunch of small pieces, and that makes it very easy to, uh, uh, easy and tractable to uh, simulate um, the behavior of the material. And so then later on more uh, there are like particle-based methods like position-based dynamics and projective dynamics. Uh, uh, but there's all these shortcomings um, of each of these methods. Um, one of them being it is finite elements. Fin uh, finite element methods are non-differentiable and, and sometimes very slow. Um, PBD is not physically realistic because it uses sort of a, a predictive model to... Um, estimate uh, system dynamics, and then, um, yeah, projective dynamics. It's hard to model hyperelastic materials, um, which a lot of soft robotics does. Um, so, yeah, what's the material point method? It's a, it's a combination of a particle-based method and a grid-based method, um, where you basically have two different representations of your material that you switch between. And so you get the uh, flexibility of a particle-based uh, simulation method and the, the kind of computational tractability of, of grid operations. Um, yeah, the material point method is differentiable. Um, it's easy and efficient. Uh, and it's actually physically realistic. So I'm going to walk through how exactly the material point method works and then how uh, it, it, um, yeah, and then how you can do uh, differentiable robot design with it. Um, so you have in one time step, you have these three steps. Uh, and like I said, you have these two representations, a particle representation, which is basically an array of a bunch of particles, uh, their, their um, material properties, their velocities, um, and their positions. And then you do a particle to grid transfer. Um, then you have a grid representation. You do a lot of the physical computation on that grid. And then you uh, you have a grid to particle transfer function, which uh, puts the representation back into um, the particle representation for the for the next time step. Um, so then, yeah, how does how does it work? Um, for one one iteration of optimization. So you do what I just said on the last slide. Um, 
for many for however many time steps. Um, you compute the loss, whatever your loss function is, if it's uh, you know spanning a distance, jumping, uh, whatever you want your robot to do. And then you backpropagate that loss through all of the physical computations that happened in the simulation. Um, and then you update whatever parameters you're trying to optimize. These are usually um, like actuation parameters. Uh, but you can. there's also been some work done where you can actually optimize the morphology of the robot, uh, which is really cool. Um, so then if you do what you just did, saw on the last slide over and over and over, uh, for many iterations, you can get the... Um, you can get the robot to um, minimize your loss function and uh, achieve the desired behavior. So I'm going to attempt to do the sl smallest of live demos <laughs> just to show you how uh, how easy it is to start using start using this. So nothing could possibly go wrong. Um, so so. Yeah, this repo, if you just look up like diff tai, tai Chi examples, uh, Tai Chi is a, a really cool Python library that you can use to um, very easily do auto differentiation. And the material point method has already been implemented um, in this example repo. And so if you clone the repo, um, go into it. And then I already set up the uh, the environment. And in this diff npm.py um, is all of the code you would need to, to run a differentiable uh, material point method um, simulation. So, so this is the actual simulation that was just on the first first iteration right and you can watch each iteration watch the loss go down um and every everything in this uh diff mpm dot pi uh implements the physics implements the auto differentiation and so i just wanted to show this to show you how easy it is to uh, actually uh get started doing this uh if you want to use this um i want to mention uh while this is running, uh, the, um, this is running just locally on my machine and uh, differentiable optimization of soft robots is one really good al alternative to um, evolutionary computation where I would have to run thousands of um, simulations to, to optimize the controller of this robot, whereas this is happening um, within 20 iterations of gradient descent. Uh, on my local machine. So go back to my slides. Uh, so there are different ways uh, that once you get started using this method to simulate your soft robots, uh, there's a bunch of different things you'll run into. Uh, and uh, this was kind of the, the work that this paper does is we, we went through all, all of these uh, all of these things and I just wanted to say if you actually do want to go and use the material point method for your own research project then uh, go read the paper but I'm not going to go into all of the things that we looked at um, but very very roughly if you don't want to end up like this guy um, it kind of all, all the work kind of boils down to do grid search on a, a few parameters and all of this stuff is in the paper, but um, the kind of three the three main parameters um, that you should look at uh, is the time step size, the material point me method, grid resolution, and the learning rate. So the first two will help you avoid the kind of material tearing and the uh, the ro the robot actually being sort of physically accurate and um, um, optimizable, and then the learning rate uh, helps you avoid things like um, gradient instability. 
Uh, and yeah, so uh, if you actually do want to go do a research project like this, um, you can squeeze out, uh, yeah, be better performance in less time uh, and not leave anything on the table when you're doing this. So yeah, the, the upshot is if you actually want to go and do a project with this, um, go check out go check out our paper um, and you'll you'll save yourself a lot of headaches and a lot of uh, a lot of time. And yeah, thanks to my collaborators, especially especially Yako, who couldn't make it here. Anybody have any? No, maybe. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so I think I'm with Pedro. This is awesome. <laughs> and uh, let's look at let's take some questions. Um, the the function that maps the particles to the grid and then the grid back to the particles. Um, how hard is that to define for your system? I mean, I, I can see how it works in the voxel case of the. But in general, can you just do you have a method for that? Um, so the actual like particle to grid and grid to particle uh, functions are specified by the method. So it's like an al it's an algorithm. Uh, so like in the repo that I showed, all of this stuff is implemented, and it's just it's really just physics equations operating on on things like. Uh, the mass and velocity of these particles. So if the particles had, say, other abstract properties that are not mass, velocity, stress, et cetera, could it be generalized to that? Um, properties, I mean, you can you can impose like, ec like external forces, like that's what you do to actuate particles, um, if that's what you mean. And, and then you can define like the the material properties, like the stiffness of each particle. Does that make sense? Yeah, thanks. Okay. okay, yeah. Hello, uh, I'm a big fan of Tai Chi and a big fan of differentiable Tai Chi. And, uh, uh, well, when uh, it uh, when I saw it for the first time, for me, it was like, wow, finally, there is something way better than, say, like, traditional machine learning frame differentiable programming frameworks like JAX, PyTorch for these sort of simulations. And then uh, like uh, it's already, I guess, a couple of years passed since DFTG paper. And like, what are the, like this seems to have such a huge potential that uh, uh, I'm expecting to realize uh, soon, like what, what, what are the biggest, most recent advances or maybe some secrets, some tips around the world cooking something. Um, yeah, so last year, uh, our lab, uh, or no, an alumni of our lab, uh, uh, David Matthews published a paper called the efficient automatic design of, of robots. And there he used, uh, I think he used if Tai Chi to actually design a robot within like two minutes on his local machine. And they actually built it in the real world. Uh, so I, I know that's kind of a, proof of concept and I don't know uh I I know it hasn't uh I I don't know of any examples where it has like revolutionized sort of yeah. robots yeah and uh, another question so uh usually examples I've seen where coupling the like soft body with uh, quite simple control structure and uh, usually implemented with PyTorch I think so where there are experiments uh like implementing a more complex controller and training it in a cup uh, coupled with the physics simulation. Yeah, I, I'm not aware. I'm not aware of any. 